a viewer requested that we make a video on how to make our own string copy function. So that's what we'll do in this video. We're gonna learn how to make our own string copy function in C. So a string copy function copies a string from a source to a destination. So first we'll make a source string and a destination character array to store the string. So we'll say car source is equal to, and we'll say copy this. And the destination character array will have space for 100 characters. So it has more than enough space to store the source string. Now the string copy function looks like this. We say strcpy and we give the destination and then the source as arguments. And string copy is gonna copy the source into the destination. Now normally to use string copy, we have to include the string.h library where it's defined. So we'll include string.h so that way we can test out the real version of the string copy function before we test our version. So after we copy the source into the destination, we can print out both the source and the destination strings, and we'll find they're the same. So we'll print out the source followed by the destination. And if we save this and run it, we're gonna find that both source and destination are copy this. Now, one thing the string copy function does that you may not be aware of is it also returns a pointer to the destination string. So we could say here, car star dest pointer is equal to string copy. And what we'll do is assign to this pointer here to a character, the return value of string copy. We're gonna find that it actually points to the exact same string as the dest array there. So we could say dest pointer here, but we're gonna find that it's also going to be the string copy this. And in fact, it's the exact same character array as dest there. So we print this out and we get copy this here. And if we were to print out the pointer values for dest and for dest pointer, we're gonna find they're the same. So we'll say printf dest and printf dest pointer percent p backslash n to print out the pointer values, in other words, the memory address. And if we save this and run it, we're gonna find they both point to the same address and memory. But string copy does do that. It does return a pointer to the destination string. So we should have our string copy function do the same thing. So let's implement the string copy function our way now. We'll say here, car star str underscore, and I'll call it copy one. And then we'll say car star destination and const car star source. So our string copy function will also be accepting a pointer to the destination character array as an argument, as well as a pointer to the source string. And we're gonna make it const because we're not gonna actually change the source string. And the function will also return a pointer to the destination string. So we'll copy this and paste it, and we'll define our function down here. Now I'm actually gonna show you two ways of solving this problem. One is gonna involve a counter variable, the other is gonna involve pointers. And I'll show you the technique that involves a counter variable first. So the first thing we'll do is actually check if destination is null. If destination is null, that means somehow we were past a bad pointer or memory was never allocated. If that's the case, we can't really do anything. And we're just gonna return null in that case. So after we've done this error handling here, next we'll copy the source string into the destination character array. And we have this sort of view of what's going on in memory where we have the source string, and at each index we have a character. Now eventually there's gonna be a special character, the null terminator, that's going to end the string. What we're gonna do is create a loop, and we're gonna use a counter variable to keep track of which character we're copying from source to destination. So we'll copy the first character, and then we'll increment the counter variable and copy the next. And then we'll increment the counter variable and copy the next from source to destination. Now when we're gonna stop doing that is once we encounter the null terminator in the source string. That's gonna be our signal to stop because that's when we know the string is over. So let's write the code for this now. We'll say int i is equal to zero while the source string at index i doesn't equal the special null terminator, keep going. 
And what we'll do is copy into the destination character array at index i, the character in the source string at index i, and then we'll increment i to look at the next character in the source string next. Finally, when we're done, we're going to store into the destination character array at index i the null terminator to terminate the string. So that way the character array destination will now store a proper string. And then finally, we can return destination. So we'll say return destination to return a pointer to that destination string. Okay, so let's give our string copy function a test now. Instead of calling string copy, we'll call str underscore cpy1. And we'll save this and run it. And we effectively get the same result as before. We get copy this as a source string and copy this as the destination string. And the des pointer is pointing to that same destination string. Let's make another version of our string copy function. This time we're going to do it without a counter variable. We're going to use something called pointer arithmetic to help us do that. What I'll do is call this one string copy two. And we'll copy and paste this and we'll implement it down here. So again, we'll start off by saying if destination is equal to null, something has gone wrong and we can't really do anything. So we're just going to return null. So again, we're going to copy each character from source to destination until we reach the null terminator in source. But this time we're going to use the concept of pointer arithmetic to help us. So both source and destination are really pointers. And what they point towards is the first character in the string and the first character in the destination character array. And we can actually use and manipulate these pointers. So if I dereference the source pointer by saying star source, and if I dereference the destination pointer by saying star destination, what we're doing is actually accessing the character that source and the character that destination currently point to. So star source would access this character C initially, and star destination would access this index of the destination character array initially. And if I were to then say star destination is equal to star source, what I would be doing is copying that character C into that index in the destination character array. And then finally, one other thing I can do is use pointer arithmetic to actually manipulate the source and destination pointers. So if I say source plus plus and destination plus plus, what I'm doing is incrementing the actual pointer itself. Source plus plus is going to have that source pointer point to the next character in memory. Destination is going to have the destination pointer point to that next character in memory, the next index in the destination character array. So I could actually use these operations instead of using a counter variable to keep moving along the pointers. And then we could use the dereference operation to help us do the actual assignment. So let's do it this way with these operations now. We'll say while dereferencing source doesn't equal the null terminator, continue. Dereference destination and assign to it the dereferenced value of source. And then increment destination to have destination point to the next character. And increment source to have source point to the next character. Then we'll dereference destination which will now be pointing to the right position to place the null terminator, and we'll set it to the null terminator. So at the beginning of the function's execution, destination was a pointer to the first character in that character array. But in this while loop here, we've incremented destination. We've changed what destination is pointing to. At the same time, our string copy function needs to return a pointer to that first character of the character array, because that's going to be a pointer to the destination string. So what we'll do is actually store the original destination pointer into a variable. And then at the end of the function's execution, we're going to return that pointer 
just so that way we're returning a pointer to the actual destination character array as opposed to the null terminator. Let's test this function out now. We're just gonna replace one with two here and we'll test out our second function. And we're gonna find we get the exact same results. We're just going about it in a different way using pointer arithmetic. So this is how we can build our own string copy function in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.